I want to welcome you to Pullman. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Davidson. I am involved in the historic Pullman Foundation. We're the special friends group with the National Park Service. And we put on this event today, but uh, uh, in addition to doing that in my spare time, I'm a railroader. I'm a locomotive engineer with Union Pacific. So I love trains. I love talking about them. I'll sit here and talk with you all day if you want to. So, um, <laughs> yeah, be careful what you ask for. So I want to give a shout out to Metra. Without their cooperation, we couldn't be doing this. And we have a lot of sponsors. Also the private car owners, the American Association of Private Rail Car Owners who are here. Okay. Providing these cars. We're going to look at five cars, all built here at Pullman. Um, the tour is going to start in this car. We're going to work our way north. A couple safety items. We've got a gap between the platform and the car, so when you're getting on and off, be careful, mindful of that. As we walk through the cars, we cross on car to car, sometimes they're a little uneven. You also want to watch the end doors, they're very heavy. So, what I'd like for you to do now is to go into this car. And before you go in, take a look. I want you to notice the fluted stainless steel on here compared to the older cars, which are smooth-sided. We'll talk about that inside. that makes sense. So what I'd like for you to do is go inside, all the way to the rear of the car. It's a lounge car. There's big chairs, couches. Have a seat. And I'll come and talk to you. And and just go to, back there directly. Don't look around. We want to get everybody back there as quickly as we can. And then on the way out, you can look at things and you can take all the pictures you want if you want to. Oh. Come on in. Well, welcome to the Royal Street. And um, I asked you to take a look at the exterior of the car because it's obviously different from the cars that predate it. And it's, this is a great example of a streamlined car. Um, the stainless steel fluted sides are a result of um, advances in the technology of pressed steel and welding. And so some of the very first streamliner trains were built in the 30s. That's when the technology developed. But it really took off after World War II when the railroads had to uh, purchase many cars to uh, replace the cars that they wore out during World War II. And so this is a great example of a post-World War II streamlined train. It was, uh, as I said, built in 1950 here at Pullman for the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, which operated a train between New York and New Orleans with another railroad, and the train was called the Crescent. So this car was built and contributed to the pool of cars that made up uh, the cars that operated between New York and New Orleans on the Crescent. This car remained in service for 21 years until 1971 when it was taken out of service and retired. And um, since 1971, uh, 51 years ago, there have been four owners of the car. The, the current owners are Robert and Gwen Riley. They live down in Mississippi. Um, they own a short line railroad, a freight short line railroad, and that's why they got interested in having a private car. Um, this car, uh, they are the fourth owner of the car in the last 50 years. So there's been three private owners before them, 
And the previous, I think, was a doctor who lived in St. Louis, and this car was always stationed in St. Louis, and they've left it there. So it's, it's home base is St. Louis. It's stored at St. Louis Union Station, uh, and it's viewable to the public, but you can't go inside of it normally, but you can see it from public area. Um, they brought the car up on Amtrak from St. Louis last week. Um, I, yesterday I was giving tours and I met two gentlemen on the tour who actually rode up from St. Louis on this car as paying passengers. They had such a good time, they're doing it again tomorrow. <laughs> the, the car is going back to St. Louis at 9 a.m. tomorrow. These guys are from Chicago. They're really hardcore dedicated because they're going to ride this car all the way down to St. Louis only to get off and get on another train and come right back. <laughs> so they're doing it for the experience. So one of the notable features of this car is this elevated floor. So I'm standing down on the, the base floor throughout most of the car. It's, you're up about 10 inches higher than where I'm standing. And this was to enhance the viewing out these great picture windows that line both sides of the car and wrap around the rear end of the car. So this is a round end observation car and the proper location for this car would be at the rear of the train and that would be the rear of the car looking out the back. Um, back in the day when this was an open public lounge, there would have been a full bar here with a lounge attendant who would have um, made cocktails and served snacks and maybe sold some sandwiches things like that in the in the lounge car and you'll notice above every window there's what looks to be a doorbell button those are call buttons to alert the attendant that you needed service and so if you look up uh, above that silver box that's right there where you start down the hallway that has a chime in it so if you push the button and it's not powered now so i can't demonstrate it but it would bring a chime which would alert the attendant that somebody needed service and there's little arrows and so whichever arrow moved the attendant knew which arrow belonged to which button and they would you know respond to that part of the car if they were were called um, the car has five identical uh, bedrooms in it that you walk by as you came in here three of the doors were closed two were open so what you'll see when you walk back out of here is that the two open doors the first one you're going to come to shows the room the way it would look during daylight when you were traveling and not sleeping and you have a coach seat and you can look out the window and then the second room which is to the north of it that shows the room made up for sleeping at night with the bunks now just so you can see the contrast between day daytime travel and nighttime travel um, so what I, uh, normally I do a little bit more of a, a job briefing or a presentation out on the platform. So we really appreciate all these cars are privately owned. So in a way we're in somebody's house here. We're in their living room. <laughs> we appreciate that. So I like to you know just make that known that you know show some respect. And uh, uh, the way the tour is arranged is the car owners have left some doors open, and if doors are open, you may feel free to look around and to uh, check out what's inside that room but if the door is closed please leave it alone respect it don't don't try to open the door um so does anybody have any questions um anything so you said this would be an, an end car then yes this would normally be it can you there's a coupler on the back you could like it's coupled to the engine oh, okay, now right, right. but the ordinary location for this type of car the intended location is to be at the rear the, the rear car of the train and this this would be a lounge space here, and it would. Sometimes people ask, would it be open to everybody or just the five people who sleep in this car? No, it would be open to anybody okay, who is on the train. Yeah. So, but there are five bedrooms. So it's a combination sleeper lounge. Uh, it's round end observation. Some people ask about the two panels, the two square or rectangular. Uh, okay, I'm asleep. Back, back on each side and that's to get access to the um, marker lamps which have to be red to the rear to alert trains that are following that there's a train ahead and because the car is curved the marker lamps are way recessed in the car at the full width of the car and that's where you get access to change the light bulb or to change the, the filter the color of the light so just to hold your drinks. And that's that. So old ashtray. So what we learned is that since this car's been remodeled, nobody's ever smoked in here. But back in the day, this would have been thick with smoke, and people would have had drinks and ashtray and and 
you know, it, it wouldn't smell the same as it does. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Pullman is that the archives have been preserved. And archives are all over the place. Some are in universities. There's a bunch at Newberry Library downtown. Those tend to be about real estate and the houses here and the downtown building that Pullman owned. But all of the archives about car building and, and the plans are all out at the Pullman archives at the Illinois Railway Museum in Union. They have two libraries out there. One's a general railroad library and one is a Pullman specific archives. And so if somebody wants to look up information about a specific car, they can go and pull the record, they can look at the floor plan, the drawings for it, and it actually identifies the paint with like DuPont code number of this. <laughs> so this is all, at least it replicates the way the car, obviously the furniture wasn't this way, but this is original, and, and all the colors and the ceiling and the lights, everything else is original. So. Uh, this, these were built with air conditioning. There was air conditioning in 1950, and you know, um, they they ran out of power. Uh, previous one, we go on the older cars. Those cars, uh, they they attempted to cool them by putting ice up above the ceiling, big 500-pound blocks of ice, and then just having fans that circulate the air around. That that's you know pre-World War II, you know, 1920s type. Well, it was efficient though, right? Air conditioning. Oh, it worked. Yeah, I mean it. it Probably not as efficient as this, but let it work. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you don't have any more questions, we'll make our way back through the train. We're going to leave. This is the most recent car you're going to see of the vintage cars, uh, and then when we get to the next car, is the oldest car. It's built in 1914, and it's a business car, an office car, and we'll we'll go see that next. So, if you want to follow me. Oh, and here are the car owners, Mr. and Mrs. Riley. Hi. They are now back for lunch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are you going to put that on YouTube? Have a seat in the next section of the next car. Are you the last one? Are you the last one? Okay, want a picture of this? That's neat. Get that. Oh, you weren't the last one. Okay. Come on in here. And I'm going to try and make my way over to the lead here, back by the hallway. If you don't mind, I'll slip in here and you can, whoop, sorry, excuse sorry, me. Sorry, sorry. That's okay, and you can kind of stick from here. So, it is, it's... welcome to the Francis L. Uh, Suter, and as I told you, this is the oldest of the three vintage cars we're going to look at today, built in 1914. This is an office car or a business car. It is a private car that would not have been on a public passenger train. And... Um, so it, it was assigned to a Pennsylvania Railroad vice president. It was built in 1914 here at Pullman, and one of its notable features is a wood-burning fireplace. And at this time, I will introduce the car owner to you. It's Mr. Richard Stewart. <laughs> and, and he tells us that he had a fire going in here in January 
when the car was at Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. And it was zero. It was zero degrees. How did it happen? This past January. No, no, I mean, what happened that started it? No, 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 they put on the Titanic from that same foundry. So that's that's kind of neat. So this car uh, was in service from 1914 all the way up to 1971, at which point it was finally retired. And then it kind of fell into a state of disrepair. It got deteriorated, it got vandalized. Um, a previous owner bought the car first from the railroad and at some point, Richard saw a picture of it, and he fell in love, and he was able to convince his wife that, yeah, car ownership is in our future. And, uh, they bought the car. So I think many, that's you want to buy what? Really? <laughs> I, I can imagine. So, um, no, they've done a great job with it. So, thank you. Thank you. Were you able to reset the phone? Yes. So. Most of us here are old enough to remember those yes. rotary oh, phone yeah. devices, right? Oh, oh this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, pick it up. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. I would like a pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Richard is an aerospace engineer and an electronics whiz, so he figured out how to hook up the cell phone to the oh, rotary oh, dial. Oh, I can send wow. and receive phone calls so, <laughs> with a rotary nice. dial phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it? <laughs> so we will mosey on back to the other end of the car where hopefully you will meet Mrs. Stewart. Okay. Right. And she'll probably say, don't believe anything he told you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you want to earn a lot of nice brownie points, please notice her earrings. They're <laughs> <laughs> PRR and Pennsylvania Railroad. Okay. Or, uh, okay. Pullman. She has, I think, up to 14 sets now. She puts wow. a different one on every day. Every day. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. That's yeah. good. I'll oh, see. Yeah. You, got you lost money. your brownie points. I you know. know. <laughs> I could have, could have scored there. Thank That's you. right. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. This is their bedroom suite. And more of the I had three of these from, from the car here, and yeah. two bedrooms each have one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And you can hear a dial tone if you pick it up. Anywhere. <laughs> do you mind if I do? Please do. That's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the weight of it, too? Mm -hmm. It's pretty heavy. Oh, you know? yeah. I remember, yeah, we had, not that, but... Um, All right. Yeah, we had, you'd hear that dial tone. Yeah. Now it's, it's something to do. My son wouldn't understand. Exactly. He wouldn't understand. Yeah. Those that had rotary dial phones had party lines. What is this? Why would you do this? There's no party line on mine. It's because we didn't used to have a button. Yeah, right. Hello, how do you do? Hello. Look for a charger. I'm interested in the RPU. Oh, hold on. Uh, we'll go out uh, and for about eight hours a week. Philadelphia go to Pittsburgh 
and then stay there for the night. And they'll just go to the motel and then come back either the next day or the day after, and then they'll go back and get a drink. So we can take uh, up to 20 for a day trip, but then when we get to the destination, it's one of the people over. Or we have to attach to a second car that is sleeper car, and everybody goes to sleeper car to sleep, and then comes back over here to come and get food. There are two Murphy beds, one here and one there, that come down and fold out for extra sleeping space. There are storage cabinets up above for linen. They are lined with cedar, so the moths don't eat the wool blankets or the linen wear. That's really neat. And um, the other thing that I find interesting about this car is the table is original. There are four extra leaves yeah. for it, so it, oh, it wow. extends oh, out. Wow. It goes, um, it can seat 12. And what's interesting is, again, we see call buttons on the windows all around. Uh -huh. But if you had a big group here and you put the table out there, nobody can reach the call buttons because they're too far to the side. So what you needed to know, excuse me, and step away, I'll show you. This was a vice president's chair. He always sat here. The reason why, if the table was out in the middle, he didn't want to have to lean way up to get the buttons. Mm -hmm. He had his own button there. <laughs> so he could discreetly just put his hand under the table and, and summon the attendant. Mm -hmm. So is the table wired to something? Is no, it wired? It, no. Now it's Wi-Fi, but oh, yeah. originally uh, there was a plug that went into the floor oh, that okay. attaches the yeah. So it was hardwired at one time, yes. but it's Wi-Fi now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's an interesting. Thing. Kind of like the way the so, cell phones work. So a couple sure. other interesting features <laughs> is that the owners have retrofitted this space with a little bar. Oh, and and it, it used to be the passway door, which was a little square door where the commissary workers could put food on the car or ice or whatever they want, supplies. It went right back to the kitchen, which is sure. back here. And what they've done is take a look at the graphic display they have. I, I really like that. With the Santa Fe in the west on one wall and the Pennsylvania and the New York City skyline on the other wall. And the other interesting thing is this is a galley kitchen. So we get to walk right through the kitchen. You're gonna see it up close and personal. So when we do that, we're gonna go into the next car, which is the New York Central 3. And you just, uh, again, they're, they're very similarly laid out. So just in that first section, find a seat, and I will talk to you about that, but you can follow me through. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Glad you all came out today. Thank you. So yeah, you could close the door then. You got to push it kind of hard and make it click. There you go. That's good. So this is New York Central car number three. It's 14 years younger than the other car we were on. It was built in 1928. This was built, the car was specifically built for Harold Vanderbilt from the Vanderbilt family. He was a great grandson of Commodore Vanderbilt who built the New York Central system, a major railroad um, that went between Boston and New York and Chicago and St. Louis extended in all the Northeast and into the Midwest. A very big, powerful railroad in its time. Um, Harold uh, graduated from Yale. He was an attorney and once he graduated he joined 
uh, the family business, which was the New York Central Railroad, so this car was assigned to him. Like the last car we were on, this was a private car. This is not a car that passengers would have ordinarily ran on or uh, rode on. Um, and it was assigned to him. Uh, he had it up until 1956. In 1956, the uh, Vanderbilt family lost control of the New York Central Railroad in a, a proxy fight and um, they went out so the car stayed with the New York Central and it was assigned to other executives and used over the years. It actually outlived the New York Central so in 1968 the Pennsylvania Railroad and that car we were on is a Pennsylvania car this is a New York Central car those two railroads merged mm -hmm. so New York Central and Pennsylvania became the Penn Central Railroad Penn Central Railroad was a financial disaster. Mm -hmm. It went bankrupt two years later in 1970, and until a recent, more recent bankrupt, it was the largest bankruptcy in U.S. history. Does mm -hmm. anybody know the more recent one that exceeded it? Brothers? No, but you're close. You're in the same, well, not quite in the same time frame. A little bit further back than Enron. Lehman. Lehman Brothers was 2008. Enron. Enron, That's what we're Enron was. So it was Enron, but whether that 2001 or 2000, somewhere around there. So that exceeded. Penn Central was a bankrupt railroad. But this car continued to serve during the Penn Central era. And then the solution to the bankruptcy of the Penn Central was to merge it with other bankrupt railroads to form Conrail. And this, this car actually survived into the first couple years of Conrail, and it actually got painted as Conrail. And you'll see a picture of it in the other room. So another real interesting facet of this car is that it uh, was used a lot by celebrities. Oh. And so for whatever reason, New York Central in later years was willing to rent the car out. So I know that Frank Sinatra rode on it from Chicago to Los Angeles. A bunch of Hollywood stars rode on it. Um, Senator Adlai Stevenson from Illinois used this car for uh, his presidential campaign, unsuccessful attempt running for president in 1956 doing whistle stop speeches off the back platform. And I really like this car, it has a brass railing on the platform and it has the, the drum head sign which would be lit up at night saying the name of the train. That gate would be closed and it would be facing, facing the rear. Um, JFK and uh, Jackie Kennedy rode on this car and you're gonna see a picture of them at the other end of the car when we go into the, the dining area. So there are a lot of celebrities that, that rode the car and it was uh, very interesting. So um, we're going to uh, drift on back to the other end. To, and it's very much laid out like the other business car. However, on the way there are three open doors. So door number one has a little velvet rope across it. You can look in there and see somebody's room. But door number two and door number three are open. So go into door number two and then turn to your left and you'll come out door number three. They're only oh, about really? 10 feet apart, but you can make a little detour through the room. So you can follow me. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is a diffuser. Put oh. some oil in there. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Resources manages it. 
And they have big plans to rebuild the erecting shops, which are burned out there. Um, they own the north wing of the factory, which is shut down right now. It's a construction site because they're, they're rebuilding it. But I've actually, I've been able to go in there myself and see it. And there are all these uh, big bays where they built the cars. Yeah. And so, no, they, uh, they've they got a deal with Amtrak that we're going to get the George M. Pullman when that gets retired, the Superliner car. They're uh, after the Robert Todd Lincoln. Uh, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son became the president of Pullman after George Pullman died, and he had a business car. So they've got dibs on that, and they've got dibs on several other cars. The thing is, it's, you know, uh, Illinois finances. Uh, most of our money, believe it or not, comes from marijuana. It's discretionary spending, and that's what comes to the recreation side and the net, you know, the parks. And so, it's going to take a while, but no, they, they have very big plans, and, and um, I know we want to rebuild Market Hall altogether, and that's like a ten million dollar project to put that back together at this point in time. So. No, we, that, that's why we appreciate the support and everybody coming out because uh, we do have big plans in the future. It's going to take a few years, but you know, I think the vision is there. So, For those of you that came in a little later, feel free to pick up the brochure from Aprico. And this is Maria. I'm going to introduce her um, if she wants to make some comments. It's, she's an interesting lady. She's got some cool things to say. And the other last thing I'll point out is this car one time had a fireplace too and it was here or over here and now it's, it's it was taken out in 1940. There's a picture of it though up on the wall over there where you can see the fireplace in the, on the, yeah there you got it. He pointed it out to you. So. Yeah. And what's nice about belonging to Africo is that you do not have to be a car owner to be part of the organization but you have to be part of the organization to get on one of the cars. So, <laughs> but also the membership is um, extended. So you, when your one year membership now goes to December 23rd, if you sign up within the next week or so, from being on the tours and stuff like that. We are coming back here Labor Day weekend. We're having our annual convention for Africa here in Chicago. We'll be at the South Street Station. There'll probably be about 15 more Pullman cars there. And uh, sometimes it's 15 to 20. We don't know exactly how many members are coming. The majority of them will be, will be a large group because everybody loves coming here because of Pullman. Um, and it gets you, when you do, the membership is a family membership or a partner membership. And it gets you into um, some of the, uh, on, you have to look on the website. I don't know exactly what the details are. I don't even know if it's on the website just yet, but it will be on the website. And you can be, you know, join us in all the different tours that they're doing. Metro's doing a lot of different things with us and stuff like that. So it should be very interesting. Also, um, these private cars went through Africa, do different little conventions and different little excursions. One of my favorite excursions is the one that goes up through um, to Vermont, and it's for the um, fall time, it's called the Fall Explorer, and as you can see, oh, the colors, and you travel along the Hudson and into Vermont, and you're parked on Lake Champlain, and you're just in this magnificent world of color, and they do a lot of different historic things to talk about. It's a lot of fun. And it also gives you the opportunity, they do um, a, a car park, cars that are all lined up and you get to visit the different types. Every Pullman I've ever been on, did you say there were any? I don't think so. I think oh. people, I just okay. think so they were every, talking every car I've ever been on, and I'm chef. I'm the chef on the MRC, right? every single car I've ever been on has always been different. You have, these three cars are all different. I've never seen two Pullman identical. Two out of all of them I've ever seen look kind of similar, but sometimes you have one, two cars that are back to back. One is your dining car and your dome car, the other one is your sleeping car. So there's a lot of fun to be had on these trips and stuff like that. Now we're going to go back to me being a chef on board, which is when you do hire NYC3, you also get me. And 
Um, it's a full service. It's being like in a luxury hotel on wheels. You get served on your china, crystal, and silver, the Vanderbilt way. <laughs> um, you can sit down. Everything's all sit down. Tablecloth and everything looks kind of a record. We've been through a lot in the past three days. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was just looking at it. I was like, oh my God, it's not even on here. Um, so you, there's 10 people that you sit down comfortably. I put 12 here. I've done turkey dinner, or Thanksgiving dinners on this train. And uh, everyone tells you, everyone's going to say they have the best kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so I, I have a dishwasher and it's not me. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of things on this path. And we just did a birthday party. We had 25 on board. So we had the table on an angle. And they were day riders. So we took the car from uh, Penn Station, we stopped at Philadelphia, we brought four people on, and then we went over to, uh, it sounds like they have a party back there. We should be having a party. <laughs> um, and uh, they just went on, they used this as their hotel. But when they, they came back for like Sunday brunch, and then we did a birthday party one night, and we did a dinner another night. So there's all different ways to hire the car and to your likings, and where you want to pick it up and where you want to go. On the two, the front room, the very first room, you saw the two breadstone. stone. Mm -hmm. That closes up and that becomes a settee. So that from the salon right into there, you have another sitting area. And in the dining area, this room right here, that's the berth is already up. Okay. And that to bed becomes a settee too. Sure. They say you can fit four comfortably. I don't know where those four people <laughs> came from. <laughs> I think you can fit two people on each side, <laughs> but I've seen four in there. So if you want to follow me down, that's the room I was talking about. See the difference in
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello. Last week, Last week, remember? Yes. Yes. There? All right, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, my name is Derek. I'm with Amtrak. And behind me is my colleague Yolanda. Back here. Hello. 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 I, I assume you're here because you want to see some Pullman stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, behind me is uh, car 32009. This is the last Pullman product ever produced. Uh, Amtrak in the mid-1970s placed an order with the Pullman Standard Company for 284 bi-level passenger cars for long-distance overnight trains. Uh, they started the order sometime in the late 70s and they finished with this car behind me in July of 1981, delivered it to us, and then they closed up shop, never to produce a car again. Um, the car is still being used as delivered as a sleeping car. Uh, that 284 car order also comprised coaches, lounges, and dining cars. Uh, the sleeping car is still in use. So, came off the assembly line in 81, it's 2022. So as a testament to Pullman workmanship, that's 41 years and this car is still being used. We just pulled it off the California Zephyr. It came in on Tuesday from San Francisco so that it could be ready for the events at the end of this week and this weekend. Uh, as delivered, it can accommodate up to 44 passengers in 21 rooms. That's roomettes, sleep two, bedroom, sleep two to three. Uh, the family bedroom sleeps two adults and two children, and the accessible bedroom sleeps two. The last two bedrooms are on the first floor. Uh, that speaks to this car here. The reason this car is here is this is a transition dormitory car. The transition means it's a transition from a one-story car, like you just got in, the old Pullman. You came up the stairs because the Superliner cars that Pullman built for us, the passage from one car to the X is on the second floor. So we needed to have a transition to get you up to be able to get into the Pullman car. Uh, so as a sign, each one of these cars, when it's in use, will have an attendant, a sleeping car attendant, who in the old days, that would have been called a Pullman Porter. Uh, the attendant will make up your bed for you, uh, get it ready for nighttime use, get it ready for daytime use when you go to breakfast the next morning, uh, and just generally try to provide a pleasant experience for the customer. Uh, we're going to move you through, take a look, have a seat for a moment. Uh, I did have the room, some of the rooms made up uh, for nighttime. Most of the rooms are in daytime configuration, so you can see what it's like. If you want to spend more time in the car, I, I uh, respectfully ask for you to go to Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL <laughs> to buy a ticket to support mine and Yolanda's salary. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, when you take a look at the, at the bedrooms, those are the bedrooms down the way, turn around and come back because that's the end of the train. You have to go back out the direction you came in. All right. So. That's the presentation I was working on. <laughs> Welcome aboard. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Do they let us see downstairs or no? <laughs> it's just the bathroom, some more roomettes, uh, the family bedroom, and the accessible bedroom. Is he rock lessons? 
So there's a bathroom in there as well, a combo shower toilet. It's actually pretty comfortable. I just got back with my mom from Texas. Oh yeah. Yep. How much was your fare? Twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair, is it? <laughs> not to me, darn it. Thank you. 